Welcome to the Score Esports, the home of weekly original esports content produced in house and hosted by some of the most overly animated human beings you will ever lay your eyes on. Thanks to our six dope ass series and a lot of clickbaity titles and thumbnails, we've been able to grow exponentially since 2015. Just look at this graph and all these crazy numbers if you don't believe us. Wow! Anyway, I've got a story up to narrate. Thanks for helping us get to a million subs and subscribe if you haven't already. Peace, nerds. So, what do you guys think? That's it? Are we trying to get them to unsubscribe? If that was the goal, we should have gotten you to host it. <laughs> guys, guys, we cannot feed our audience this stat-driven bullshit. Don't you think they deserve to know the real story? The Score Esports is based in Toronto, Ontario. That's right guys, we are Canadian, despite the fact that many of you think we're located in America. Not that there's anything wrong with that. We're a subdivision of the Score Media and Gaming, a Canadian company that started off as a cable sports network and now makes sick mobile apps and digital content for hardcore sports fans. One thing that the Score has always been known for though, is that we don't take ourselves too seriously. We have a ride to go to your house. You bought the car here. Yeah. Actually go to my house. Yes. Is this something you do on a date with like a woman? If you get sunburned and then you have a fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah Probably sounds... never been asked. Do you, do you delay the fight? A celebratory Canadian beer would seem to make sense after a hit like that. You got a favorite beer? I'm not answering yeah, that. That's, that's a clown question, bro. Anyway, back in 2014, our CEO, John Levy, was approached with an interesting proposition. A couple of the guys who worked here, the engineers on the sports side, basically showed up one day and said, have you ever seen this stuff? Matt on the floor, I think he's in the bed. Oh, Baker may be in trouble here, Death Mark tries to clean it up for Ryu. Oh, look at the cleanse, look at the moves! Baker, what was that? I said, no, what the hell are you talking about? He says, well, you know, there's like hundreds of thousands of people out there sitting and playing and streaming and watching esports. You know, where the other networks were sort of poo-hooing it because they didn't know what the hell it was. And I, quite frankly, I didn't know what the hell it was either, but I, I wasn't prejudging it. And then little companies like Twitch were getting bought and sold for $970 million, right? There's something here. So, I mean, don't think you know what, what it is, but, you know, look at it, get people working with you that really love it and understand it. Tap into the passion of it, and then you got a shot. Less than a year later, we launched a website, an app, and not long after, this YouTube channel. And yes, even we slipped up and capitalized the S in esports. Our bad. Please don't <laughs> tilt the crap out of me! Now, most of you may not remember, but back then, our content looked very different. We dressed like every video was shot on prom night, offered you behind the scenes vlogs of our exploits. Kelsey's Sing. locked inside of her Airbnb because you need a key to let yourself out of it. Unbelievable. This is the second time on this trip that we've been locked in a house. No, that's what I'm saying. In All a right. house. And we even thought you guys might enjoy our strange take on TMZ Esports. This is War Room Week 3, Episode 2. <laughs> In addition to sponsoring events and providing analysis, we conducted a ton of interviews with players. While our camera work was definitely questionable at times, every now and then we did capture comedic gold. Do you feel like a sense of, of wanting to take back the title or anything like that? Not really. Not really. Okay. <laughs> I, I just want to chew and smoke weed, if that's weed. <laughs> like, I don't care weed, I smoke weed. Hey guys, uh, I'm here with Emperor actually of Team 2 t and joined from, like for us is Young Buck, playing a bit of a translator role in case things are going bad. What do you think of your teammates so far? Are they funny, maybe mean or trolly, you know, like all of your teammates? No. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, before you joined G2, mm -hmm. um, did you know team players, the hybrid perks, Kikis? Yeah. You know them? Um, how good did you think our team was? Which place do you think you were going to be? Mm. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> but even when things were going according to plan, we weren't afraid to ask those hard-hitting questions. Out of all the players at the Summit 4, who's the one that you'd want to punch in the face most? Beer or hot liquor? What? Beer or hot liquor? Why don't you get them roses? What is that? Roses like flowers. <laughs> what? It's actually so awkward. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, okay. Every now and then we did break some pretty big news stories and we were recognized for our efforts. Best esports coverage website. The winner is none other than the score esports.com. But despite our growing presence in the space and the connections we were able to make, we were still trying to figure out exactly what it was you guys wanted to watch on YouTube. Hmm. Am I doing this incorrectly? In, out. In, in, out quick. So yeah, I mean, in the vein of experimentation and trying to figure out what worked, we tried a lot of different segments. You know, some of these segments were born from my days working in entertainment or sports, stuff that I'd sort of seen, and you know, sometimes they worked, <laughs> sometimes they didn't. All right, cool, so I wanna talk about your celebrations. What are your go-to celebrations? What the f Whether you guys responded well to the content or not, we learned a lot about who we were in the early days. And most importantly, we got a sense of exactly what our biggest strength was. When I, when I first started to play Dota 2, I just wanted to play Dota 2 and just don't do anything else at all. This time last year, it was ridiculous. I didn't know what I was going to be doing. I felt like I had no prospects. I finished my degree, but it wasn't necessarily the best degree to get a job in. Not yet! Sidelord of Thongs! Liquid are doing it! They're going to take it! Now Lady and China are going oh home! My God. And Balba is on his feet! Can you feel it? So around, I guess, 2017, we started experimenting with more like documentary or storytelling um, content. Our first experiment into that was our Iconic series, where we got to tell some great stories about the best moments. Dustin Chick. Oh, what? Best players and all kind of the hype plays in esports. No, how does he do this? We released that and the audience kind of went nuts for it. With only 8 HP, Callie landed this ridiculous jumping USB headshot. Finally, for their side. I can't believe what I'm witnessing right here. Oh, wow. Kelly, Get out of Kelly, here. Get can out you of here. It? We had a series on iconic esports moments that our audience really gravitated towards. And we figured that if people were interested in the stories behind these specific esports moments, that we can absolutely tell the stories behind these great esport athletes. And that's how the story of came to be. What are the qualities that make a good leader? Perseverance, dedication, intelligence, the will to be nothing less than the best. Kuro Kuroki Salehi Takansomi has all of these qualities and more. He dreamed of being the best, of hoisting the Aegis of Champions at the International. Not for money, not for glory, but for the thrill of competition. Off the back of this new story-driven content direction, our channel really began to take off. And it wasn't long before we put out our first million view video and celebrated hitting 100,000 subs. Thanks guys. We kind of had a handle on what people were actually looking for in esports differently than what everybody else was doing. We weren't just doing interviews anymore. We weren't just doing post game. We were telling the stories and really helping to tell the stories, to shape the narrative around esports as a whole. He figured Daigo would drop an input, gambling that the beast wouldn't be perfect for just one split second. He was wrong. It was an interesting time with the channel because we discovered that people were really interested in these epic and serious pieces of content, but um, I always felt that there was room for a show that was a bit lighter and more personality driven. And I was always looking for inspiration. So one morning I came into the office and I sat down and I overheard Josh explaining dicks out for Harambe to uh, a few of our coworkers. You know, the way he told the story it was funny, it was entertaining, people were learning something. Um, I, I, I felt right then and there that, you know, this could be a show. I'm Josh Burry, and this has been a trip down Memory Lane. <laughs> That's so bad. You said, you said give it a beat. When I was told that we were going to do this series, and it was supposed to be like, uh, like kind of like a dank look at weird topics, and uh, the inspiration was like that '70s show basement shot. I was like, I'm definitely in for that. It it was really different because I think we were willing to have a little bit of fun with it. We were willing to look at some stuff that wasn't strictly esports. I think that that was maybe the biggest departure. I honestly, I'm it's kind of weird that they took that chance in a way because we 
we're really just joking around, talking about memes. The biggest takeaway that we had from that show was that collaboration was the way forward for our channel. So once we got that series up and running that bridged the gap between our editorial department and our video department, we were off to the races. With this new era of creative collaboration, our team was able to try out different show formats. And over the last few years, we've been able to tell you even more incredible stories. There is nothing in the world quite like EVA. No esports tournament, no sporting event, no competition can compare to it. After all, there's no event in the world where everyone is a competitor, where everyone starts off on equal footing. When you were young and sitting too close to the harsh glow of that box set television your console was attached to, dreams came all too easy. It's hard to still stay really strong in who you are as a person when you're constantly left alone in solitude, like on a daily basis, but it's not because you're locked up in a room or something. You're out and about, you're on the streets, you're in the city, you're seeing people living their lives day to day with families, friends, partners, whatever. You're seeing everything happen all around you. But inside of being around those millions, you're completely alone. Going all the way back to when we were doing written content, we had a really specific idea of what our audience was, and I think we were right to a certain extent. People were tribalistic about the eSport they liked. Like we've got tons of great Dota, and if you're not here tomorrow, go back to League of Legends. And what we learned very quickly over time is that the audience that we were building on YouTube was not as tribalistic. Because we were telling these good, interesting stories that you know had human angles that you could appreciate no matter what game you loved, you could be a League of Legends fan, but still really be interested in the story of Olaf Meister. That, I think, was really exciting to find out. Even though our channel had become known for celebrating competitive gaming's past, we felt we were missing something. The esports world was still growing and changing around us, and we really wanted to be part of that conversation. I started to feel, and I think a lot of people started to feel like we were always kind of going back in time but we didn't have a way to say something as a, as a company. You know, we're having all these conversations in the office all the time. When something happens, uh, you know, everyone's talking about it, everyone's sitting down, ranting to each other. And uh, Don't At Me felt like a way to, to do that, to be an extension of the office voice. If you want to take anything away from this video, don't fucking cheat. But if you are going to cheat, don't go on TV and advertise it. That's how I would say it to him. I would say it to you that way. Okay, calm down. <laughs> the, the walls are glass, Devin. I think the biggest misconception with our office is that everybody that works for us agrees on everything that we do, and that's just not the case at all. It doesn't matter which franchise, whether it's top 10, the direction of a story of, or what we're gonna do in the next episode of Over Explained, we constantly clash with each other, and to be honest, that's what brings out the best in us and why our channel has been so successful. Another funny misconception I think that people have of us is that the host of every video is responsible for the entire production. We started to get this when Colin was hosting top tens, and people were asking like, is the office behind him a green screen? Which I thought was the funniest shit ever. This isn't something where like one person writes it and it just gets passed off to somebody to edit it and put it together, or like, we have to absolutely work together if we want to get a good video out there. Fact the matter is, on any given video, there's a writer, there's a script editor, there's a video editor, there's an animator, there's somebody who worked the camera, there's like four interns pulling footage for it, there's somebody who, you know, checked the sound on it. People are like, wow, there's so many of you. It's like, yeah, do you know how much content we put out? <laughs> One person could never do this. But on top of being even more committed to giving you better content, we've also been able to give you a better idea of who we are as well. We haven't even gotten to the dog shit yet. And yeah, there was a dog and it shit everywhere. <laughs> what do they say? Let's see. Um, Bingo, bongo, bongo. Oh, you're right on, you're right on. Sound like you. Gimli? I think they say bathroom because my girlfriend and I, when we were like we were in New York recently, and she asked someone for the washroom, and he just looked at her. She's like, "Do you mean the bathroom?" Oh, guys. <laughs> I'm just gonna say washroom. Fuck this shit. I'm Canadian. Shit house. The freedom. The freedom. It's the freedom room. There was also some shit you never got to see, like this. Well, guys, that's it. Those are our favorite plays from the Raleigh Major. Be sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and let us know in the comments what moments from the Major get. Get you hard. Get you. <laughs> Just hold up the medication. Raleigh Major. I love your grandpa socks, man. Can you Just fuck off. It's 3 o'clock. <laughs> Just 301. What? 301. Can you fuck off? Haha! <laughs> <laughs> so, what happened last time?
<laughs> Nothing really. Just showed Dan how to play Street Fighter 6 in the parking lot. <laughs> in the last few years, the thing that has always been central to what we're doing is trying to be real, trying to be authentic, trying to show that we give a shit about esports. We're passionate. This is our life too, as much as it's the lives of our audience and the people we cover. Like this is what we care about as well. I think we we have a good combination of we are super serious about the content that we put out, even if the content is silly. You know, I think uh, I think as we've grown, we've had this ability to. You know, listen to people that make fun of us. When on <laughs> Don't At Me, we were doing these title card sequences when we we're lifting up the paper, and everyone's telling us, guys, you look like idiots. So we're like, we started to play around with them. I think you, you really see the response when someone's telling you you shouldn't do this, and then you fix it. You know, they feel special. They feel like you care what they think. And I think it's the same thing with our content. Honestly, when I first started, I didn't know anything about esports. But through the storytelling we've been able to do over the last few years, not only have I become a fan, but I've been able to meet so many amazing people that have you know, enriched my life. And I think you can talk to any host that works on this channel. The, the feeling you get when you're at an event and somebody approaches you and tells you how much they love our content, uh, it, it's really humbling and it, it encourages us to keep doing what we're doing. We definitely made some mistakes. We've had some missteps. We've figured it out as we went. But at the end of the day, everybody that works here and has worked here, it's people who care a lot about gaming and about esports and all of the content we make. I think a lot of the times you see that that shines through. You can't really fake that passion. You can't fake the care. You guys have like a really solid following and engaged audience that really loves what you guys are producing. So great work. If you guys haven't checked it out, you guys go check out the Score Esports, man. They're doing really, really well. Guys, it goes without saying that we are really proud of our journey to a million subs and grateful to everybody who's been a part of it. Mostly though, we wanna thank you for helping us get there. And rest assured, we have a ton of incredible content planned for the new year and don't plan on slowing down anytime soon. Now, let's cut this sappy shit and end this video on something a little special. The Score Esports reads your mean YouTube comments. First message is from Mythwar. Uh, the comment is, fuck Devin. And I mean, if you're gonna come at me with those heaters, it should probably be something a little more fucking creative than fuck me. Cause you know what, fuck you. Hey Miles, you look like a Nicolas Cage Chinese knockoff. <laughs> the fuck does that even mean? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay, the next one is from Prabash Chandra. It says, if penises could talk, they would have sounded like Keith. <laughs> Characters in a language I can't read says, Colin, invade my colon. I'm gonna have to pass on that one. Vincent Tyrell, why does Dimitri look like the kid from Peabody and Sherman, but with brown hair? Yo, I do look like the kid from Peabody and Sherman. Grant Zahara says, this host is probably really good at tossing a salad. I'm actually not. Unless you mean like throwing up, in which case I'm not good at that either. Is anyone good at throwing up? Whoa. Why is that tossing a salad? <laughs> I've heard that Devin Jones goes to the gym and the only exercise he does is shoulder shrugs. That's pretty fucking funny. I do do this weird shit with my shoulders. Ritual says, this host is a clown to be honest and this was like a year ago, according to this comment. So really, I mean, I was just ahead of my time, really. I'm like the Joaquin Phoenix of YouTube videos, you know? This is the most biased video I've ever watched on this channel. Fuck you, Miles, not because you hate anime, but because of your shitting, your shitting writing and acting. Thanks for subscribing. This one comes from Pedro Pau. I still can't, I still, Jesus Christ. I still can't over how they got the Transformer guy to host this show. Do I really look like Shia LaBeouf? I mean, I'll take that as a compliment. Fix your fucking grammar, Pedro. Coffee Caveman, I like that name, says, I hate your cringe endings, but now I'm kind of addicted to the humanity of it. Wow. So our cringe endings are like a Zeppelin crash, I guess? He says, this guy is so fucking cringe, it's insane. Man, I don't think you've ever watched a college video. 666, this guy fucking blows at hosting. Noted. Before watching this, oh God, it's Dimitri, 
bet half of the list is League of Legends. What the fuck? You understand they make me do League content? Owen Rice writes, this host is a cuckold, okay hand. He did. Like I'm a cuck hold. Yeah, I'm a cuck hold. So I like grab cucks in my arm and I just bring them down with me. That's me. I'm the cuck destroyer. Mystery Mr. R. His man talks slower than the college professor. Professor emoji. It's a good try, I guess. You just say fuck this guy next time. It's probably easier, right? Your eyebrow is disturbing. You know what? Like I used to get a lot of shit for my eyebrows back in the day, but ever since Keith came into the fold, nobody says shit about my eyebrows. So like, thanks for taking that bullet, Keith. It looks like his eyebrows have their own minds. Well, that's how smart I am. <laughs> and everybody's always in on my eyebrows, dude. From Lucas Gomez. My man Dimitri is the only human being that can hear Maverick create a hole. Dude. <laughs> You know what the fucking fucked up part about this is? I can't. Drink every time this host waves his hand up and down while talking. Dude, you'd have liver poison by the end of like one of my videos. If you did it for every one of them, holy shit, dude, you're fucking dead. This dude has too many hand gestures. Well, Zero, how about that one for you? Oh, this sucked. This whole segment blows. If you're watching this afterwards, it's Miles' fault. I'm sorry. All of the comments were like, this guy is cringe, or this, this Good. channel is cringe. Good. So like, <laughs> Good. I'm happy. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.